Um, our next speaker is Sean Westfall. Mr. Westfall is Prevention Point Philadelphia's Overdose Prevention and Harm Reduction Coordinator. His interest in public health started in 2007 when he started volunteering in Philadelphia to provide free services for those experiencing homelessness. In January 2011, Sean began his journey by learning about emergency medicine, the life-saving use of Narcan, and soon afterwards reversed the first of many opioid overdoses in his community. Sean has been at Prevention Point for five years. In his current role, he is responsible for managing a team that provides education, harm reduction, counseling, and access to life-saving tools such as naloxone and fentanyl testing strips to people who use drugs. He manages the organization's Narcan inventory, ensuring distribution to 15 prevention point teams, and ensures that the entire staff of 170 people is trained in overdose reversal. Sean is also a certified basic life support instructor. Um, his overdose prevention team conducts training and education throughout Philadelphia with a focus on people who use drugs. Uh, the team also provides training to providers, parents, partners, peers, and other advocates. Uh, Mr. Westfall. Thank you, Sherry. I'd like to take this time to thank you all for attending. Thank you uh, to the other panelists and organizers. So, uh, yeah, what is harm reduction? So one thing we say is any positive change. It's a set of practical strategies designed to reduce negative consequences of drug use or any harmful behavior. It is a person-centered approach with a uh, spectrum of different drug use. Uh, it empowers and affirms people who use drugs, um, the primary agents for improving their lives. It also prioritizes the right to health and safety for all people, uh, offering options to those most marginalized within the health system. It recognizes that poverty, race, class, social isolation, past traumas, gender-based discrimination, among others, affect capacity to address drug-related harms. So I wanna talk a little bit about the drug supply in Philadelphia. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to the Center for Forensic Science Research and Education, also the Department of Public Health here in Philadelphia. So fentanyl is, has been the, primary drug in dope since at least 2016. Um, at least since 2018, xylazine has been the primary adulterant uh, in dope. Uh, fentanyl and xylazine combined make drink dope. Uh, so the ratios vary. Uh, sometimes we're seeing anywhere from one part fentanyl to 0.1 parts <coughs> xylazine, which is a rarity. Uh, usually it's about one to four, one to seven, maybe um, up to one part fentanyl, up to 46 parts xylazine. So it varies quite a bit. Um, it's in all the drugs or all the dope supply in Kensington for the most part, spreading throughout the city and the nation. Um, more about the drug supply in Philadelphia. Um, so in Philadelphia, the average amount of fentanyl dope samples remained relatively consistent from the third quarter of 2022 to the second quarter of 2023. Xylazine content in dope samples continued to increase quarter over quarter uh, with the second quarter of 2023 showing the highest average amount. In the first quarter of 2010, the second quarter of 2023, Solid crack samples generally contain more cocaine than powdered cocaine samples. And methamphetamine uh, samples really vary. Um, but mostly, for the most part, uh, methamphetamine, um, but there was very limited data on methamphetamine itself. So as we're seeing as a trend, uh, the dope is mostly xylazine and it continues to be that way. Uh, we're speaking about uh, overdose fatalities in Philadelphia. 2022 is the latest data that we have so far. Um, we saw 1,413 people died from drug overdose in 2022. Uh, the second number, of, the highest number was in 2021 with 1,276 people died from a drug overdose. 
83% of overdose fatalities involved opioids. Fentanyl, um, back in 2010, fentanyl was involved in less than 10% of drug overdose deaths. Um, in 2022, fentanyl was involved in 96% of all overdose deaths. So this graph here kind of goes back to 2010. Um, it goes to 2021. We see 2010. There was a t and and this really represents um, at the Medical Examiner's Office toxicology report. Um, they find opioids. They find stimulants. They find other drugs. Um, so you know, um, in 2010, opioid and uh, drug overdose deaths, including opioids was 297. Um, you go back to 2021, that was uh, 1,052. So we're seeing a huge spike uh, consistently uh, increasing throughout the years. So one thing I really want people to think about in how we respond in, uh, to suspected opioid overdoses, you know, we've really had to change our game up a lot uh, since 2018. Um, or even 2016 when fentanyl took over the market, we constantly have to be on our toes, right? So no matter you know what the person may or may not have overdosed on, uh, or even they use drugs at all, I want people to think about the basics of life support, right? So um, you know, staying safe. We're calling 911 if the person is unresponsive. We're controlling any life-threatening bleeding. If necessary, be protecting the person's head, neck, and spine, especially if we suspect a spine injury. We want to make sure the person has an open airway so they can breathe. We're supporting the person's breathing. Um, if the person doesn't have a pulse, we're getting CPR. Happens may grab the AED if available. And if we suspect an opioid overdose, we're um, giving the loss on. So I want to switch a little bit to, to the wound care issue that we're seeing. Um, there's been a lot of different wound care clinics pop up just to address the, the need. Um, this graph here goes back to 2010 um, or 2010 to 2020. Um, and we're seeing a spike pretty much across the board, especially for skin and soft tissue infections, sepsis. Um, Zyazine does have a horrible effect on people. Um, as far as wound care goes, we are thankful we have a wonderful wound care team here at Prevention Point. Uh, they recently had a paper published in the Journal of Addiction Medicine. Um, so I know we have a limited time, so I'm not going to go too much into it. I encourage everybody to check that out. Um, my hat's off to all those clinicians who are doing wound care out there in the street. Um, they do an amazing job. <clears throat> so where do we go from here? You know, uh, as mentioned earlier, talking about test strips, um, a prevention point. We distribute fentanyl test strips. We also um, distribute xylazine test strips. Depending on the legality of them in your locality is going to depend on how people can purchase them or if they can purchase them legally. So we'd like to see it across the board. I know in Pennsylvania, fentanyl test strips are decriminalized statewide. We would like to see that nationwide to also include other drug testing type strips. I got to mention overdose prevention. So if you yourself use any substance, if you know anybody that uses substance, here's a couple of things that we like to um, encourage people to think about. One, avoid using alone. We know that most people die from opioid overdose type alone, uh, with nobody around them. We encourage people to use the buddy system and stagger their use. We encourage people to go slow, go easy, especially if they inject, they can always put more in, they can't take it out. We encourage people to avoid mixing other drugs with opioids. 
we want people to understand and respect their tolerance to opioids, especially fentanyl, especially people getting out of jail or treatment. You have to understand that they, they've lost a lot of their tolerance. If a person doesn't use fentanyl, but uses other substance, we want them to get in the habit of testing their substance with a fentanyl test strip. Always carry Narcan, know how to use it. Uh, here at Prevention Point, uh, last fiscal year, uh, we trained 1,300 people in how to use Narcan, and we've distributed um, just over 95,000 doses of Narcan for free. Um, and a big part of how we do that is we like to do it um, handed out little or no barriers whatsoever. And we've been able to do that because our partners at the state um, has helped us get that Narcan out there. And uh, I really can't say enough good things about them. And hopefully people in other states, um, you know, also have those type of resources where they can get the naloxone they need to be able to distribute. Some of the services we provide here at Prevention Point, um, 30,246 individuals served, 394 HIV patient visits for ongoing medical care, 1,775 HIV tests administered, 516 prescriptions for PrEP, 7.9 million syringes distributed. Um, there was 1,103 wound care visits. 10,814 social service provided and 357 individuals newly inducted into MOUD clinic, uh, which is up 60% over the last year. I wanna thank you guys so much. Um, and I appreciate your time.